Hey folks, I'm Philippi and welcome to Star Trek Infinite. It's finally out and uh, as a big Star Trek fan, I'm excited to play this game. So let's get into it. This is a loading screen and we're just going to load a new game here and you can play one of four factions. The Cardassians, the Romulans, the Klingons, and the United Federation of Planets. Each have their own sort of things that they're interested in, power and control, cutting and innovation, glory and honor, and justice and excellence, as well as various kinds of government, the Central Command, a, a State Senate, the Clan Empire, or a Federated Democracy. We're going to play as the Federation because uh, I just want to. Their ideals align with something that I'm interested in, and uh, I think they'd be the most fun to play to start off with, for sure. I'm certainly going to try the other factions later on, but let's try this one for our first playthrough. So, right here, the United, Face of, uh, of Planets, the United Federation of Planets is a representative democracy. The United Federation of Planets is widely referred to as the Federation and was founded in 2161 by the Andorians, the Humans, the Tellarites, and the Vulcans, and technically the Alpha Centaurians, but that's uh, part of history that is uh, perhaps a little too deep in the canon. Uh, pioneers in their quest for interstellar exploration and cooperation between species, the Federation is profoundly rooted in the principles of liberty, equality, peace, justice, and progress. Many things that I personally believe in, which is why I like the Federation. Further to these goals of peace, co peaceful cooperation and scientific development and space exploration, the Federation members work together with full trust to exchange knowledge and resources as well expand as their territory through diplomatic means. We have two civics, higher education. Each person is, a, is entitled to achieve as much as they can, and we have a responsibility to create this environment. This increases the recruitable science cap by plus one, and um, pop growth from immigrants by plus 15%, as well as diplomatic expertise. By listening carefully to other uh, cultures, not only do we understand more about them, but we deepen our understanding of the universe itself. Increase the opinion of first contract protocols by 30%, or 30 points, I should say, it's not percent, and... Um, Envoys improve relations with minor powers faster. Cool. Engage. President, I have been assigned to help you on the. So let's say. If you need my advice at any time. No tool tips, because you're rude and talk over me all the time. If I do that, this is our home system, Soul, which we know very well because we live in it right now. We got Mars and Vesta, which is a um, asteroid, Saturn, and all those things to do. And if you're looking at the screen and you say, huh, doesn't this look a lot like Stellaris? Well, indeed it is. And the game developers, uh, both the Paradox and the um, associated or sub company uh, that developed this, uh, whose name I don't remember off the top of my head, um, they uh, openly admit that this is based on the Stellaris platform. Now, there are significant differences in this game, and there are Stellaris. The two games are not the same, and the game, one game is not really a reskin of the other, but there are a lot of similarities. I'd say like 60 to 70% of the game feels a lot like Stellaris, where the rest of it is very uniquely Star Trek Infinite. And we'll get into a bit of that as we play through. You'll see what I'm talking about. So you can see on the right here, we've got the outliner here, which is very similar to Stellaris. We've got the various planets that we have, Volker, Andorra, uh, sorry, Earth, Andoria, Vulcan, and Tellar Prime. Uh, we got our shipyard here, Space Dock 1, which is a very famous shipyard in Star Trek. Um, we got our military fleet here, the Miranda First Fleet. We got only Miranda classes in it. It's called the, uh, the Eliezel design, I think that says. Eli, Eliel, Eliel design, maybe? So we got the, the, whatever, the USS Curie, the Strother, the Silversides, the Burton, and the Walters here. Five ships in our fleet. And we can assign a leader to this, an admiral. So you just go over here and you can pick the thing you want to assign. You recruit them and off you go. And then we have our civilian ships. Uh, and there's a bit of a difference here. And you'll notice that at the bottom, we'll, we'll get to that. So we have our constructor ship, which is just like the constructor ship in Stellaris. And you send it out to improve stuff around your system. And in our system, we need more minerals faster. So let's get Pluto. Um, uh, fixed up here. We have our science ship here, which has got our, our science uh, person in it. Uh, Destroyer of World Society, monthly influence has increased in research speed. So if we go to our leaders over here, you can see the leader screen, all the leaders that we currently have. We have one governor, and we'll get to the governor in a minute. 
We have uh, four scientists, which are doing physics, society, and engineering research, as well as one commanding the science ship. And you notice that this is the old style of Stellaris, not this new style after Galactic Paragons, where they uh, cut out the individual scientists per research uh, branch or tree. Uh, and they just have one lead scientist on a council. I kind of hope they introduce the council to this game, uh, because I think that mechanic is better. It's less micro-y. And it makes more sense. And I really like the idea of having like the Federation Council be out there. And you can have the head of Starfleet and the head of whatever, Daystrom Institute and so on and so forth. They could really specialize it with the lore and stuff like that and make it really cool sounding. And I'm sure they could do it for the other factions as well. But let's make sure everybody is assigned the correct thing. So our physics person is an engineer. That's not good. Our um, society research is also an engineer. And our... Engineering research is a society person. So let's uh, switch them around. So we'll go to technology. Uh, we'll go to society. Oh, we got to pick research. Sorry, I got to pick the person. Uh, and that's society. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Back out of this. I got to. These all symbols are different, so I got to remember which is which now. I try and figure. There's tech at the bottom. Perfect. So society research person has an engineer in charge. Yeah, I don't want that. I want a society person. I can work on society research. Will they do new worlds tech faster? They're also good at anomaly research speed, so they might be a good person to be on the ship. What about this person? They're also society, but they don't add anything to the ship, so let's choose you, and they do military theory. That's fine. I don't care that they're doing that. And let's check uh, the other um, thing. So now we do have a society person in charge of the society tree. And we need a research person in charge of here. So let's switch uh, John Huang here and uh, Jose Achebe up here. Now, do you have anything that gives me uh, stuff? You got leader cap? No. And you got anomaly research speed as well. So let's uh, unassign you and unassign you. And we'll stick the an engineer down here, this person. Yeah, who doesn't really provide any particular bonus. Uh, and then we'll grab our science ship and put the person with the best science thing in it. So you do survey speed and you do anomaly research speed. Let's pick the survey speed first and for now. Uh, and then in our tree, uh, leaders, can I hire another scientist? I can. Can I get one that's for physics? Uh, you do society and you just do experience gain. Let's get grav here. As sort of a generic person, and we can put them in charge of uh, this thing. Hi, Grav, you can be in charge of that. Uh, and speaking of, uh, now we have a spare scientist, so let's build ourselves a science ship real quick. Uh, I don't have the five, I need 75 alloys, and I only have 10, so I just gotta wait for that. No problem, they can just sit there being themselves. And uh, so let's finish looking at the outliner here. So we got planets, we got the shipyard, we got our fleet, we got our other ships, we got our science ships. Here, let's have this science ship, and we'll go up to the galactic world, and you can see here's everybody, here's the world. Now the alpha and beta quadrant, uh, alpha and beta quadrant, if I remember correctly. Although it might be the other way, no, yeah, this, this is beta quadrant, this is alpha quadrant, yeah, yeah. Alpha and beta quadrant uh, are randomly generated except for the center here, which is always, not always the same. Oh. I think the planets are the same because I recognize most of these names from the uh, sort of playthrough I did on my own. But the layout was different. Last time I played, Bajor was over here, and there were two, three worlds next to Bajor that were unclaimed. So that's neat to see. So I suspect this is mostly the same, just a slightly different layout. We got the uh, demilitarized zone here for the Romulan demilitarized zone between us. The Romulans do start with a. Uh, um, a non-aggression pact or a what is it here a truce with us until 55 so that's quite a long distance the creation of the uh the demilitarized zone was that the klingons are here uh and all that kind of stuff we also have the betazoid houses over here that we can talk about in a minute but first we got a science ship that we should get to do something um so let's explore new worlds. so let's start let's start next to bajor and we'll survey this system and just like in stellaris you can hold down shift and then survey next to it. And But unlike Stellaris, there are no lanes. You can just fly around. And so let's do that. 
Let's get uh, that bunch done and we'll explore out to uh, Beta Z as best we can, like this sort of section here of space. Uh, and we'll get another science ship in a minute. Now you notice we have this governorship. So what is this? Well, governors, unlike being assigned to planets, they have a ship and they can fly around from system to system to system, doing various actions inside that system um, that are sort of governor oriented. So let's take a look at our planets first before we get into where the governor is going to go. So we have Earth here, uh, we have 400, so I can really just upgrade one thing on a planet, which we will probably do to one of them, and we'll see which one has no jobs. They all have two, right? Yeah. So Earth is currently specialized across the board with maybe a slight leaning to um, uh, energy and industrial district uh, production. Which reminds me, I should go across the top, shouldn't I? I'm getting ahead of myself here because I'm excited. So across the top, this is basically Stellaris, but with different stuff here and a little bit of additional stuff. You got energy credits, which is the same as Stellaris. You've got deuterium, which is new, and this is the thing that powers ships. So it's a collective term for a basic resource we need for ship upkeeps. We can also gain more by a whole bunch of stuff. So this is like ship upkeep. Uh, we got minerals here, which are the same as uh, Stellaris, and it's just for building stuff. We got food, same as Stellaris. You got to feed your pops. Each pop requires a different amount of food, as does colonization. We have alloys here, which are like alloys in Stellaris. You use them to build things, especially ships and star bases. Um, then we have Unity, which is like um, uh, Unity, I think it's called in uh, Stellaris. Now I'm second guessing myself on the name, but uh, we use it to build up traditions and things like that. And you use it to spend in other areas as well. We get Influence, which is the same as Stellaris. Again, you build this up to build star bases and so on. Uh, we have our tech research. This is how much research we get. Same as Stellaris. Then we have some new stuff here, which are like the um, the rare minerals in Stellaris. So except for we have dilithium, uh, tetrions, uh, gravitrons, and nanites, which we can collect and to do various things as well. Um, and on the planets, it's basically the same as well. We have the city district, which provides clerk jobs and uh, creates. Um, uh, stability, I believe, and entertainment, and uh, uh, trade. Uh, industrial jobs was produce, uh, they turn minerals into alloys, and artisans uh, produce deuterium from food and trade value and amenities. So I got some upkeep here. No, they produce, uh, sorry, they produce deuterium, food, trade value, and amenities. And the upkeep is all um, minerals and a little bit of um, energy. Our energy producer just produces energy, of course. The mining district just produces minerals. The farms just produce food. And lastly, we have a new thing here for planets um, called the cultural district. And this uh, has entertainers in it that produce amenities as well as uh, researchers that uh, create research. Um, and so it produces research and entertainment, but eats food and minerals. Very cool. So you don't have to build all your research down here, and I kind of like that change. Um, so on Earth, we may want to add something to build. Let's see what our other planets are leaning towards. So Andoria, not a mining planet. Could be a good agricultural district or planet, which is a bit strange for an Arctic world to be agricultural, but sure. Could also be energy, and that's what I might lean it towards since it's already energy, and you can designate planets here to do what you want. So let's designate that as an energy world, and we'll go from there. And Vulcan, on the other hand, does have good mining. It's sort of a good balance thing, but it's got uh, between food and uh, energy at the moment, so I'm not sure. Let's see what Teller has. Teller has a lot of mining and a lot of food. This would be a good food planet. Let's do that. I don't need to designate this as food because we have a lot of food right now, so I'm just going to leave it off that um, for the moment. And I might invest in something else instead. It's possible the planets are randomly generated because I think in my last playthrough, Teller had a huge mining district. Um, so energy... Um, let's build a mining district on... Let's build it on Teller. They've got nine, or Vulcans has only got eight. Sounds good. We'll build a mining district here, and that'll be that... Um, usage. So with that said, I'm always running out of mining stuff. Let's grab our governor, let's go to Soul, and you right click on a planet to do stuff. So we can improve worker production, so that's your base pops. These are like miners and farmers uh, and energy producers, uh, technicians I think they're called. 
Um, and then you get specialist pop, which are like scientists, uh, entertainers, and uh, things like that. Um, we can increase the stability on our planets, which is not too bad. We're at 86 stability, and I'll look at that in a second. Emergency package uh, reduces crime. And then indoctrinate pops, which uh, moves pops towards more principle. Let's do a worker production right now, because that's what we need at the beginning. We really need minerals. I found that minerals was the big drawback in my original game, that we weren't able to produce a lot of minerals right off the bat. What else? What else? Our military fleet is fine for the moment, although we should probably increase it soon. Shipyard is good. All right, let's take a look up here. So we have stability, which is empire stability. It's a little different than Stellaris, but similar. Stellaris has it on individual planets. This is sort of empire-wide. Um, it represents the overall level of order and satisfaction improving or decreasing the colony's planet stability affects the stability of the empire, and stability affects other things in the game. Spread is basically your admin, so this is how many systems and planets and pops you can control, so you want to increase this to keep up with the size of your empire. This is the number of envoys I have. We currently have zero out of zero envoys on assignment. I can't believe we don't have any envoys. It seems strange. Um, our empire population is there. You can see how many we have. We have apparently three humans and 22 humans. So it's probably 25 humans. 12 Vulcans, 15 Andorians, and 13 Tellarites. As well as a, a new pool that exists in the game called Officers. Now this is kind of like EU4 and Sailors. In fact, there's a, um, elements of EU4 in this game which I like that they brought in. We'll get into another one in just a second. And that is these Officers. So Officers are brave members of your Empire who crew military ships, different uh, ship hulls, and require a different number of Officers. And are hindered when they are understaffed. Um, gain more Officers by conducting constructing specific buildings on your colonies. So that's pretty neat that we have this pool here, and I, so far I haven't seen any ship cap out there. Now there are fleet caps, where your fleet can only have a certain amount of ships. You can see here this fleet can have 20, but I haven't seen anything to indicate that there isn't a ship cap overall, other than the cost to maintain ships is going to eat away your deuterium and other whatever resources they may cost, because uh, not all ships cost deuterium. Um, so I'll have to think about that, and maybe we can get uh, a lot of ships going. I don't know. We can't be militaristic as the um, Federation. The other thing from EU4 that's interesting is the mission tree. This is very reminiscent of EU4, and you got a mission tree where you can go through and fill up missions, and you get rewards for doing it, including constructing the Enterprise, by the way, and recruiting all these fun officers, like who doesn't want Beverly Crusher uh, to show up as a character that they can have? We'll see. But the first one here is, and we're going to try and get this one fairly quickly, is where no one has gone before. After centuries of turmoil, the new golden age has dawned on our galaxy, and it's time for us to fulfill Starfleet's true charter, to explore strange new worlds, to boldly go in the name of peace and science. Uh, scientists assigned to science ships we need at least two. We currently only have the one, but I do have the spare scientist. I just need the science ship. And uh, system surveyed, uh, we need to do 10. And it will give us for 10 years anomaly discovery chance and research speed increase, which is amazing. And then we can move down here to different stuff. We'll talk about that when we get there. Uh, let's go back to research and pick our research. So our first research here will be physics. So we can increase research speed, planetary power grid, or warp highways. So War Highways are a new mechanic. Once I research that, I'll show you that on the map, but it looks like it's basically like a wormhole kind of idea. Um, planetary Power Grid is like the planetary building in Solaris where you can increase the effectiveness of energy producing jobs. But uh, we'll get the research speed because research speed uh, bonus is always good. Right now we have a base plus two for the science skill and nothing up here uh, for our general research speed. I don't, I think it shows up here. Um, we'll have to do that. Uh, and then Skan here, who I think might be a Vulcan. Um, this person, Grav, is a Tellarite. Can pick something here for society research, and you sort of want to steam these up as well. We didn't hear, so we didn't get, though they have quick thinkers, so we can't. But this is uh, military theory, so this one here lines up, and I like that they note that this lines up with the person to show you that it'll be faster. 
So offer to production in Starfleet uh, produces more officers is cool. I'd rather more envoys. What is Federation Residences? Gives me housing and amenity. Yeah, let's get interplanetary um, study program. We'll get that done. And uh, Joshua Achebe. Here will be our engineering person. And here we can get just a flat upgrade production. Ice mining station. There's relatively uh, pedestrian ice crystals of this system. Our untapped deuterium reserve are ripe for harvesting. It gives me deuterium at a cost of money uh, and costs alloys to build. Interesting. And then compact component thrusters gives me more evasion on my ships. This is defense. This is just general upkeep. Um, let's get the defense, I suppose, going. That's done. Now let's see what is next that we can do. Let's go down our little list here. So here's the victory condition for the game. You can see how you're doing based on other empires, the balance of power and all that stuff. You can see there are Bajoran Republic and the Betazoid houses are here. Uh, we have a mission log where missions will show up that we want to do as well as anomalies we want to research. Similar to uh, the situation log in um, Stellaris. Contacts is a list of contacts and you can see who's here. We definitely want to make the Beta Zeds happy with us. We will do our best to understand you. I don't have any here. Envoy to send will be available for their assignment for... All right. I can't send anybody yet, but we do want to increase Begata said because you can um, absorb, integrate people, which is cool. So we can integrate uh, Beta Z at some point. Now in my previous game, Beta Z, which I know this is uh, randomly um, generated, uh, Beta Z was over here, right next to my empire. So uh, now that they're over here, I can see that. And looking on this map, I know I'm getting distracted from going down this list again, but the map reminded me. Uh, there's like space weather, which is cool. That's not in Stellaris. So this is our molecular reversion field. So anything in this system, it's a pop growth speed of negative 20 and a sensor rain minus one. Over here is a hazard dark material matter nebula. Gets 50 damage to any ship going in there. It reduces sensor rate and speed of ships. So you don't really want to build in there. There's another reversion field. This is a reality rift. Gives me ship fire rate plus 100%, but deals 500 damage to ships going in. And uh, this is that over there as well. And you can see we can't go quite beyond this. It's only Elf and Beta right now. This is another reality rift, yeah. There's some cool hazards out there. We'll get to that. Okay, where were we? Contacts. The market is the same as Stellaris, basically. Uh, planet management, similar to Stellaris, you can automate straight from here by just clicking this button. Uh, I can only automate Andorra because it's the only one with the designation at the moment. Just gonna leave it. Expansion Planner tells me the different planets I can settle on. I cannot settle on Mars now because it's a barren world, but like in Stellaris, at some point I'm sure you can terraform it. We can t um, colonize two very well known Star Trek worlds, Ryza and Denobula. Uh, I believe they were both early on in the Star Trek The Next Generation series. Denobula might have been the first planet they went to with the. Uh, Big jellyfish? I can't remember. Maybe that was Deneb. I don't know. And then uh, Ryza, of course, is the um, vacation world in Next Generation. It shows up. Uh, edicts and stuff is very similar. And stuff where you start with edict capacity of just number of edicts to do. So it's a bit of a dumbed-down version of that, of the edict process. And you just pick an edict you want, and you can get more edicts as time goes on. So to start, we definitely want the exploration protocols, which is fine. Edict issued and then policies, uh, this is a very dumbed down list compared to Stellaris, but you can just very change your things here. Currently we're set on cooperative, when we meet people, uh, skirmish tactics, which gives us an advantage to um, running away and disengaging from combat. Cooperative gives us um, envoy and privilege increase and border friction reduction. Our first contact protocols are proactive. It gives me a discovery chance of first contacts at plus 10%. Our trade policy, uh, this is much different than Stellaris. It's very expanded, but we're, we're starting with green uh, fuel source, which is giving me, our trade value is giving me just energy. But we can change that so that it's not energy but minerals, or so that it's not energy but food, or that it's not energy but deuterium, or so that it's not just energy but it's energy and science, or that it's energy and alloys. Uh, right now, I think I'm going to leave it as is, but later we'll probably change that. Close all these up so that it's easier to see what's going on here. 
Uh, we can go from mixed economy to civilian economy or military's economy. I think we'll leave it as is. And then leader education uh, increases the cost of leaders, which is kind of cool, but it also increases their lifespan and their level capacity, which I think is neat. Again, we'll just leave that for now as is. Uh, traditions. This is a much done down list as what you've uh, seen in Stellaris. There's only four Ascension perks you can get, and essentially four traditions that you can get because these two, these pairs are mutually exclusive to each other. So you can either have defense or conquest, research or development, commerce or welfare. As a federation, we'll probably do defense, research, and welfare possibly defense development and welfare we'll talk about that and then you have some one overarching um tradition that is representative of your specific empire uh and that's progress for the federation it gives us a whole bunch of cool bonuses we'll look into that when we get enough points to develop that ship designers vary the same we got our wonderful uh, miranda class ship here um and it's the allele sign a design and you can add your things of course a dumbed down uh, from Stellaris because there's not as much options there are only um, hull and shields uh, I believe yeah defense shields and hull 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 uh, I don't know why you don't have any shields let's add a shield here because uh, I don't have the power that's part of it so never mind I'll cancel this design when we get there uh, we can have another gun here face cannons face first power small plasma charges Um, and then, of course, you can have your fusion reactor change, your warp drive change, your small impulse engines change, your sensors change, and, of course, your um, uh, AI computer control. I think it's pretty cool. Um, very similar to Stellaris, a little bit different. You get defense platforms, of course, and then we have new designs that will show up in here as whatever. Uh, right now, we're just not going to design anything. Uh, Fleet Manager in the uh, new Paragon version of Stellaris, this is merged with the uh, Ship Designer in just two tabs, which they may do eventually here. Uh, you can assign a leader to the fleet uh, from here, as well as uh, design what kind of ships are in it. It's very similar to uh, Stellaris, basically it's the same, and you can create new fleets and stuff like that. Uh, tech Tree we've already seen. This is the Species Tree, these are all the different species we know of. Species have traits. So the Balkan longevity gives them longer lifespans and uh, better at research jobs, uh, which means you should probably turn Vulcan into a research planet. Uh, but their pop growth rate is lower. Uh, Tellarites are argumentative, gives them more experience, uh, but the leader level cap is increased. Uh, they also get research speed from jobs because they got sharp wits. Um, and But they uh, do less damage and their worker pop resource output is minus five, so they're not as good at producing goods. Uh, humans are universal settlers. They can use less housage and, uh, housing and amenities. They can live pretty much anywhere. Natural explorers, so they get uh, pop growth from immigration and resettlement costs is reduced. Uh, but they, however, they expect a higher standard of life than other creatures, so their energy credit upkeep is increased. And Andorians are environmentally resistant, so their housing usage is way down. Uh, they're minimalist lifestyle, uh, so they do more uh, damage. I don't know how that works one way or the other, but sure. And Andorian Code of Honor, uh, they have a lower leader cap and they learn slower. One across the other races as we go on. Let's unpause for really the first time. We'll take up the feet two. We got a bunch of Cessus Bellies, which I think is a team uh, a name they should probably change to make it a little more immersive to the world, but. Um, we're going, you can see my ship is just flying across. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. It's just flying across here. There, there are no warp lanes. There are no uh, anything connecting planets. You can just fly from planet to planet to planet. There is a range on your ships, but nothing controlling you from flying anywhere. So the Ashes of Kittimer. This game does have events. Um, in the blink of an eye, a relative peace enjoyed throughout Elf and Beta Quadrants uh, for the past half century lies shattered. Brutal Romulan ambush of the Klingon colony of Kittimer has left over 4,000 dead, although a Federation ship intercepted the Romulans' secret transmission. By the time they arrived, only a handful of survivors remained. This massacre marks the beginning of a new political era in the galaxy, one of opaqueness, uncertainty, renewed hatred of old rivals, and a mistrust among even the staunchest alliances. How we choose to treat others will determine the future of the Federation. We will be proactive in greeting other 
civilizations or we'll be cautious. Let's be proactive. We are the Federation and that gave us access to envoys. So let's go to the contact screen. Let's go to the Beta Zeds because we want them we to be to super friendly and we'll improve relations with them. We'll send this person over. And uh, let's form a research agreement and a commercial pact with them. Even though it will eat into my influence a little bit, but that's fine. And, uh, well, because I got nobody else to really send it to, let's be nicey nice to the, the money howls. to the uh, thing. We'll set up an embassy here and we'll improve relations with the Klingons. Uh, let's also set up an end of the sea with the Cardassian Union. They don't want one. That's fine. What about the Romulan? Do you want one? You don't. What about the Bajorans? You're... You don't want any because you are a occupied state. Sounds super. Oh, do I have one with the Beta Zeds? Let's check out. Let's check it out. Contacts. Beta Zed. Diplomacy. I do already have one. Awesome. That takes us to the end of the first episode. We unpaused for, I think, four days, which I think is awesome because there's a lot to explore. Come back for the next episode where we uh, check out this game a bit more and a bit more in depth and we actually let time pass by. And if you enjoy this, you're happy to see Star Trek, you're just a Star Trek fan, or you're enjoying the channel, please like and subscribe because it really helps out. We're trying to grow the numbers up to 1,000 so I can monetize these videos, and this video might help. Every little bit helps. Leave a comment, whatever. Tell your friends, tell your mom. Come back later. See you in the next episode. Have a great day. Bye!